Welcome to Financial Algebra. This is lesson 3.4, which is Explore Compound Interest. So today we're going to talk about the actual secret. It's not really a secret, but it's the one thing that makes the rich really rich. And the first vocabulary word we're going to come across, of course, today is compound interest. And this is ultimately the key to becoming rich. It's money earned on the money deposited plus previous interest. So this is earning interest on the interest. So in the past lesson we had simple interest, which was just a calculation of uh, how much interest we we're gonna earn over a period of time. But now we're gonna earn that interest over and over again, and the principal part of the calculation is gonna increase as we compound. <clears throat> okay, so we got the next vocabulary word, which is annual compounding, and this is interest that's compounded once per year which is essentially what we were doing in simple interest. The next vocabulary word we have is semi-annual compounding. Now this is interest that is compounded twice per year or every six months, hence semi-annually. The next vocabulary word we have is quarterly compounding, and this is interest compounded four times per year or every three months. So we break up the year, 12 divided by um, four, or 12 divided by three months, it'll give us the four quarters that we're looking for. So quarterly compounding, we're gonna we're gonna compound four times per year or every three months. Then we have daily compounding, and this is interest compounded every day. There are 365 days in a year, 366 days in a leap year. So depending on the year, we're gonna compound this on a daily basis. Now there are a couple examples of uh, when compounding can work for you or when it can work against you. Normally, for example, um, we have we have uh, bank accounts or we have investment accounts that pay you your interest either on an annual basis or on a quarterly basis. Um, not very many accounts are compounding on a daily basis when you have money in the account. However, a credit card, it's charging you interest on a daily compounded level. So um, it's working against you in the sense that it's being compounded every day versus where you have money invested in some accounts, they're compounding either annually or quarterly. Now when the money gets actually credited into your account, that's called crediting, it's money being put into the account. The interest that you earn, it's being compounded and it's being calculated, but when they actually put it into your account, that is crediting, and that's our next vocabulary word, crediting. When the interest earned from deposits in the account are finally placed into the account when the bank pays up. So that's what we're looking for, is when the bank pays up. All right, let's talk about these examples. We got checkpoint, uh, sorry, example number one, checking for understanding. So how much interest would Mila earn if her principal was $1,000, her rate was 6% compounded annually, what would her uh, what would her new balance be when the bank credits the account? So what we're looking at here is we're gonna use the same formula we've used in the past, which is interest is equal to rate times, uh, principal times rate times time. And in this case, the principal is going to be $1,000. Her interest rate is going to be 6%, and we got to be sure to express that as a decimal. And the time is going to be one year, since it's only going to be compounded one time. So we plug that into the equation here. I is equal to P times R times T, where P is going to be 1,000. R is going to be 0 0.06, because that's 6% expressed as a decimal. And then we have T being 1, since it's only going to be compounded once, and it's one year time frame. So when we multiply that all out, we end up coming up with $60. That is the interest portion of her account. So she started off with $1,000. After one year, she earned $60 in interest. Um, and when the $60 gets credited to her account, her new bank balance will be $1,060. That is example number one. Let's move to example number two. Liam put $1,000 in an account, it pays him 6%, and it's compounded semi-annually. So what will his balance be after one year? Well, in this case, Liam has the same $1,000 that Mila had in the previous example. He's earning the same interest rate as 6% that Mila was in the first example. However, now he's being compounded semi-annually, so we're gonna have to do the same process we did from example number one, but we're gonna have to do it twice. So we start off with the same equation, interest is equal to principal times rate times time, and we plug in what we know, $1,000 for the principal, 0 0.06 for the rate, and now for time, we're not talking about one year anymore, we're talking about semi-annually, so this is gonna be half a year or every six months, so this is gonna be 0.5 or one half. And when we multiply that out, we find out that we get 
$30. Now, this $30 is going to be credited to Liam's account at the end of six months. So when we calculate his interest for the next six months, we're going to start off with a principal of $1,030. It's no longer $1,000 anymore. We're going to earn, we've earned and credited that account to $30. So now it's $1,030 as his principal. He earns another 6% for another half year. And when we multiply that out, we end up coming up with $30.90, right? So we credit that to his account, and after one year, he has $1,060.90. So, you know, if you look at the difference between example number one, we're here in $60, and you look at the example number two, here in $60.90, you start to see a little bit of how compounding multiple times in a year is going to make him a little bit more money, right? It's 90 cents. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, but as you compound more often and for a longer period of time, that is going to grow at an exponential rate, which is why the rich get richer because they understand the power of compound interest and the time that they can use to grow their money. So let's keep going. Example number three here. Um, how much interest does Mila earn on $1,000 after three months now at 6% compounded quarterly? So we're going to take the same uh, equation we had before. We have interest is equal to principal times rate times time. But now the, uh, the only thing that's going to change here is the time. So the principal is going to stay 1000 The interest rate is going to be 0 0.06. But the time is going to be 3 out of the 12 months because we're only going to have this account um, since it's compounded quarterly. We want to know how much they earn at the end of the quarter. So we go ahead and plug in 3 divided by 12, which is actually 0.25 or a quarter, right? And so we have 1,000 times 0 0.06 times 0.25, and we end up coming up with $15. Now, if we did that again, we'd plug in 1,015 as the principal amount. And when, when we plug in 1,015 at 6% times the same quarter, now if we do that, we're going to show that we have $15.23 at the end of the second quarter. So, you know, in example number two, we did uh, half a year. In half a year, we had $30 when we compounded uh, semi-annually. And now for compounding quarterly, instead of $30, we have $30.23. So you can see the more times that we're compounding, the more money we're going to make. Now in example number four, it says, uh, how much interest does Liam earn in one day if he deposits $1,000, 6%, but now we're compounding daily. So what's this balance going to be after one day? So we take the $1,000 principal, multiply it by 0 0.06 for the rate, but now the time is going to be one day out of the 365 days in the year. And so when we do that, we find out that he's earning uh, in interest, Liam earned 16 cents that one day. So the new principal balance for the next day will be $1,000.16. And if he's doing this on a daily basis, you're gonna see that consistently grow. And we'll, we'll see more examples like that um, in the next chapter. But for right now, understand, I know that 16 cents doesn't look like a lot, but it's gonna continuously compound. It's gonna compound on a daily basis. It's gonna grow and grow and grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, example five is how banks actually use uh, the compounding effect in our bank accounts. Now. <laughs> the interest rate here is not going to be as nice, but um, but this is a good example of how the balance, balance change in a daily basis and how we uh, adjust. So, check for understanding example number five. James has a bank account, and on July 11th, his balance was $1,234.98. He withdrew $200, deposited a check for $34, and then on July 12th, he deposited his paycheck for $345.77. If this account compounds interest daily at a rate of 3.2%, what will his balance be at the end of July 12th? So we start off July 11th with the opening balance of $1,234.98 that he had in his bank. Now he withdrew $200, meaning he took out that $200, but he also deposited a check for $34. So we take that uh, starting balance, we take out the $200, we add in the $34, and at the end of the day, he has a balance of $1,068.98. That's his ending balance at the end of July 11th. This is the balance that becomes our new principal so we can calculate the interest. So we use the same equation. Interest is equal to principal times rate times time. The principal in this case is going to be $1,068.98 after the withdrawal and the deposit. And then the rate is going to be 
uh, instead of 3.2, remember to convert this to a decimal. So it's gonna we gotta move the decimal over two places. So this is gonna be 0 0.032 is the rate, and we're gonna multiply that by one over 365 days because we're compounding this daily. And when we uh, multiply these three things together, we end up finding that he earned nine cents in interest on that one day. So we add that nine cents of interest to his account, which we which we call crediting his account. And we have an ending balance for the day of $1,069.07. And we take that ending balance and it becomes the beginning balance of July 12th. So on July 12th, we have $1,069.07. And it says that he deposited his paycheck of $345.77. So we're going to add that to the beginning balance. And at the end of the day, since there were no other withdrawals, his principal balance is going to be $1,414.84. That is the principal balance that we're going to use to calculate his interest for that day. So we take the principal, 14.14 and 84 cents, times the rate, 0 0.032, times one out of 365 days, again, because he's only getting interest for the one day out of the 365 days. So we do that, plug it in the calculator, and we get 12 cents. So he earned 12 cents of interest, and of course we credit his account. So his ending balance on July 12th is going to be $1,414.96. So this is basically a, a general idea of how compound interest works. We are changing the principal balance as we credit interest to the account. And the more often that we compound it, the more interest that we're earning, which means the more money we're making over time. So hopefully you get a, a quick little glimpse using the simple interest formula we're able to start compounding interest on either an annual, semi-annual, quarterly, or daily basis. Alright, if you guys have any questions, you can go to our website, www.csfirst.com, and uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, at CSFirst. Peace, and I'm out.